Hello, crew members. This is Chelsea Bell coming here from Crew Box and Gordon's Wine to talk to you a little bit about October's Crew Box, which is titled Louis Dresner. For this month, we'll be exploring the importer Louis Dresner. I know in the past we've explored several importers before, but as I've mentioned several times, um, what I love about focusing on some of these importers is once you get to know their portfolios, you can look for other wines within their portfolio to find some really interesting selections. So first we'll chat a little bit about what makes Louis Dresner an interesting importer. Um, you can see on the back here, you'll always know that it's coming from Louis Dresner selections when you just flip around the back of the label. And Louis Dresner is actually a company that was founded in 1988 by Denise Louis and Joe Dresner, who they both met in New York and became married in the eighties. And it was a company started by two people who knew nothing about wine. Um, but over a span of about 30 years, they developed some amazing partnerships and relationships with different producers. Um, so they started this company when they were really young and they grew it over time. But what Louis Dresner specializes in is it's a portfolio of around 100 vignerons. We're hailing from France, Italy, Germany, Portugal, Slovenia, and Chile. And what makes it also really interesting is it's a portfolio that's really focused on what a lot of people don't deem natural wines, but I like to think about them. We like to think about them at Gordon's as more minimal um, intervention wines. So wines that are not, you know, as much focused on the winemaker themselves. The winemakers are more um, focusing on the terroir, focusing on the specific regions, the soils, indigenous grapes, and making the best wines that they possibly can with as little in intervention in the cellar as possible. So you'll see that throughout kind of some of the wines that we're discussing tonight. And I think that these wines are really well made, but at the same time, they're not super funky or made kind of naturally just to be hip. Um, they're classically made at the same time. And I think that that's what makes it wonderful. So not only does Louis Dresner focus on selections from all over the world, especially France and Italy, but some of the top producers within the portfolio would be like the Champagne Vigneron, Ulysse Colline, um, Piedmont producer Roagna, or Sicily's Ariana Occupinti, um, Northeastern Italy's Oradori, um, or Germany's Clemens Bush. But what I'm going to do is go over four different producers um, today from our October crew box. And I'm going to start you first with um, the 2019 Kohler Ruprex Kalstadter Cabinet Trocken Riesling. So I'm starting you in the Pfalz, um, right in the area of southwestern Germany. And this is an area, once again, known primarily for Riesling production, though um, Kohler Ruprecht is also known for Pinots and Chardonnays as well. Um, Kohler Ruprecht is located in the village of Karlstadt, where the Heinz family, originally from the ketchup origin, um, originated from. And they're one of the kind of founding um, wineries that really focus on more dry, cellarable German style Rieslings or German Rieslings. Uh, this historic estate was managed uh, originally by Bernd Philippi, um, but it was purchased in 2009 and since taken over by Dominique Sona, who's a super hardworking um, gentleman who likes to strictly honor the more traditional style of the centuries old cellar. Um, overall, this producer is once again known for aid worthy Rieslings, but they have broad, beautifully um, textured kind of characteristic to them, and they're rich and very mineral driven. All the wines that they make are spontaneously fermented in their own yeast, and they're able to be um, aged entirely in these neutral stuck or to, um, 1200 liter old row casks and um, in what's called a halbstock, um, which are 600 liter casks. And they use no chapelization, so no sugar added, no enzymes, and no manipulations of any kind um, throughout the winemaking process. The domain follows more traditional philosophies, once again, more focused on natural wines um, that are cultivated on these beautiful limestone soils. And um, all the wines are just so elegant and just mineral driven, fresh, uplifting. And you'll find definitely with this Riesling that it will be a drier style Riesling. Trocken Trocker is going to translate to dry. And typically a nice trick, because sometimes German wine can be difficult to understand <laughs> if it's dry or if it's sweeter, is to sometimes look at the alcohol by volume. This is gonna be about 12.5, which typically anything over 10 is gonna to start to be a little bit drier in style. So you'll find just super mineral rich characteristics to this wine, and then lots of elements of citrus and apple 
and um, just really beautiful kind of like steely minerality. It's just delicious. For the pairing here, we had um, paired it with this beautiful kind of more farm fresh um, fall salad that has feta and apples and all of these kind of really beautiful components. I always love to pair Riesling with any like apple based dishes because sometimes that's going to be one of the characteristics that always comes through on the palate for me, but just a super elegant wine for those who love acidity and freshness. So I think you'll enjoy. Moving on to our second wine, we have the 2017 um, Francois et Julien Pinon um, Silex Noir Vouvray, which is coming from France's Loire Valley, an area we've explored before. And in the subregion, which is in the central part of the Loire, which is called Vouvray, once again, focused on Chenin Blanc. Um, so all blue gray wines would be Chenin Blanc based. Francois um, was a former child psychologist who took over um, this estate from his father in 1987 and has really made a name for himself as a serious winemaker who really loves to focus on typicity in both the appellation and vintage. So you can see sometimes each year his wines will change a little bit. And um, he's always focused on organic viticulture and minimal intervention winemaking. Uh, the soil that we have here for Silex Noir is um, uh, named after this black flint soil, which is very characteristic of the area. The soils overall in Vouvray are clay and silica on a base of limestone, which is also known as tufo in the area. And there's the flint, which also is known as Silex. And it's one of the top sites um, within Vouvray for distinction and long life um, or longevity in, in their wines. Uh, the Pinons follow uh, discipline of plow plowing the vineyards um, and hand harvesting. They don't use chemical fertilizers or pesticides, and um, they don't use any cultured yeast, all kind of spontaneous yeast fermentation, which are all very traditional kind of principles of more naturally focused winemaking. Um, this is once again, another wine for me that is just so fall friendly. Um, Chenin Blanc also tends to have a lot of apple as like a primary um, fruit. No, but what's interesting is the apple is more of um, kind of like the core of the apple or like the skin. It's definitely more green apple focus. And then you get these beautiful kind of like honey and um, minerally tones too that come through. Sometimes some like subtle um, spice characteristics and it's just incredibly beautiful and textured. Um, in terms of the alcohol by volume here, I think we're gonna be yep, about the same as the Riesling 12.5%. Um, so you'll find that this is just another incredibly fresh style wine, a drier style be great as we kind of um, went over with the Francois Chabain wines back in the summertime. There are different classifications, but this is made in a more sec or dry style. And once again, named Silex Noir for these black flint soils and this 3.7 hectare plot. Um, once again, this flint is made by ancient seabeds, which always excites me. I love anything that's coming from the remnants of the ocean. These were millions of shells and organisms that make up these beautiful deep layers of limestone chalk. And then they have these beautiful um, kind of uh, layers of silica, which is that organism seen contained in seawater. And also these old sea sponges um, kind of make up these nodules of hard flint. So just amazing terroir, amazing place to grow grapes. So I think you'll enjoy this wine so much. It's such a beautiful producer and, and a wine that I don't always get to see in the market. Um, this I paired with a curried butternut squash soup. I also love doing bouvre with like a lot of fall flavors, whether it's like apple beige dishes, pumpkin, butternut squash. I think they can always go really well. And sometimes since you get a little bit more fruit, sometimes a little tiny bit of residual sugar with some of these bouvres, it can pair really nicely with some spicier dishes. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, we'll move on to our first red wine, which is a 2020 Louis Claude de Vigne. Um, it's called Le Brut um, Saint Vincent Morgan. So taking you next, um, remaining in France, but we're going to Morgan, which is gonna be an appellation within Beaujolais, um, kind of at the Southern point of Burgundy, kind of in between Burgundy and the Northern Rome. And once again, an area dedicated to Gamay production for their red wines. Morgan is a village. There's about 10 true village sites, which make up some of the top wines of Beaujolais which can be a lot more long lived than your kind of traditional Beaujolais. Um, and definitely the antithesis of Beaujolais Nouveau. So this is a producer, Jean-Claude Devine, um, who was known for kind of having this raven black hair and kind of being bright eyed and 
having a really kind of humorous uh, or a funny sense of humor. He um, had passed down, he's passed down his winemaking to, or his estate to his children, Claude Emmanuel and Louis Benoit, and they're the eighth generation to work the land. Um, their historic vineyards um, have been within the Cru Bourgogne for generations. And Les Voutes Saint Vincent um, comes from Côte de Puy, um, which is going to be in the center of Morgan. And the fruit is of really high quality. And um, there was a classification of vineyards in Morgan. Côte de Puy would be one of the premier Cru vineyard sites. So very high quality here. Um, the vines are located on the best um, exposition of the hill with um, these beautiful soils of decomposed schist. And um, in the past years, they've picked the fruit for this wine a little bit later than other vignerons in the area, just to get the fruit at the optimum ripeness here. So you get a little bit more depth and texture. The wines um, vinified in a kind of more traditional Beaujolais method. And the fermentation has been longer and more controlled than past years um, to extract a little bit more color and material so that you can once again add a little bit more to this wine. Morgan is known alongside one of the other Cru villages of Moulin et Vent as one of the most um, age worthy of Cru Beaujolais and definitely these wines are wonderful examples. You can typically, especially when young, get like characteristics of dark cherry, raspberry and black currant. And as this wine ages um, over the course of time, it can be a little bit earthier with more velvety textures with cocoa and coffee undertones. And it's quite, quite lovely. Um, this is once again, a wine that has like definitely a minimum of 10 years of aging potential, though it is more approachable in its youth now. We're in the 2020 vintage. So this might be actually a little young for this wine. I'd be interested to see kind of how you all experience it. Um, but I think you'll really quite enjoy this wine so much. It's another, once again, perfect transitional wine for the fall. And I'd actually put this for a vegetarian option with a vegetarian bean and, and, and cheese enchilada dish. I actually really love to do um, Cru Beaujolais or Gamay with Mexican dishes. I think it can be super fun, um, but I'd love to kind of get a sense of what you guys experienced with that. Uh, and then to our last wine, I'll take you to the room. And we have the 2018 Eric Texier uh, Brezem, uh, which is technically a Cote de Rhone and a Cote de Rhone classification. And it's a Syrah coming from the Northern Rhone Valley of France. Um, I would say Eric Texier is probably one of the most important um, producers within the Louis Dresner portfolio, as they've been working with them almost since the start. Um, he's really helped them evolve, the Dresner, Louis, Louis and Dresners, <laughs> evolve over time as he gives a lot of feedback and also um, works with a lot of the other producers to kind of like really fine tune best practices and make sure that everything is going really well. Um, and he has just a lot of mutual respect with the Louis Dresner team. So it's a, a wonderful partnership. He is a Bordeaux native who lived in and around Lyon since 1979 and just a jovial, energetic and fun loving person. Um, he's also a trailblazer too, who's put extinct regions such as Brezem um, on the map. And he loves to just experiment with concepts of finding kind of the best possible grapes grown in the best possible areas in the Northern Rome. Um, he also used to be a nuclear engineer. So when he gives people feedback, they should probably take it because he has a lot of, a lot of grain cells there. Uh, he also became a winemaker too after having a first year as an engineer in the, in the nuclear industry and he just had this passion that he wanted to pursue. So he went forward and did so and um, at one time too he's producing about 30 different wines in 10, from 10 different origins, but he's always had a real passion for the Northern Rhone. And what kind of led him to Brazem was um, up in the Northern Rhone you find that a lot of the Syrah produced up there is overall planted in a lot of granite based soils. Um, there's very few kind of limestone beds up in the Northern Rhone, very granite kind of schist focus. Um, but he found a plot in this village called Brezem, which is going to be on the right side of the Rhone, um, just south of Hermitage and Crow's Hermitage. And it was just one of the few places that he found um, in the Northern Rome that has comprised mostly of this limestone rock. And he thought it would be fun to plant Syrah there and see how it did. As you do find limestone closer down in the Southern Rome and they principally have it around Strachanif de Pop in a lot of Southern Rome areas that predominantly will plant more Grenache. 
So it was a test and something a little bit different, um, but he's found that it just creates incredible freshness in the wine. And it's a soil that you don't always find with the grape Syrah. And it's an area that he's kind of wanted to bring back to prominence. For um, this Drezem, 100% Syrah, he does um, no distemming most of the time, bringing the grapes um, to press with cold maceration under a blanket of CO2 to kind of extract like the most aromatic expression. Use natural yeast and very little um, to no um, extraction during maceration and fermentation. He also too uses no filtration, filtration or um, egg white lining only when necessary. So overall, just trying to be as natural as focus. And this Grisem too is from younger vines, about 20 to 40 years old, planted on south-facing limestone marl slope of the Grisem zone and organically farmed, harvested by hand. And um, it's just a gorgeous wine aged in um, concrete tanks on the fine leaves for 18 to 24 months. And just has these beautiful kind of notes of blackberry, subtle spices, and just real freshness and length and um, lift for Syrah. Sometimes Syrah can be really bold and dense and powerful and spicy and out, like higher in alcohol. This is definitely more on the leaner, brighter style, and it is super elegant. And so I think you're going to really enjoy it. Um, in terms of a pairing here, while well, you can definitely do Syrah typically with some more heavier red meat dishes, uh, lamb is always a classic in the Rhone. We had actually paired this um, with a chicken dish that I found, which I thought looked really wonderful with um, garlic and grapes and rosemary, just some um, kind of components that I thought would be nice for a younger kind of fresher style Syrah. So I hope that you all enjoy. And I would also love it too, if you could come and visit um, I'm doing a tasting on October 26th um, at the Bower in Boston, which is just right in the Kenmore area. So I'd love for you to join me. Please feel free to send me an email to RSVP. And of course, if you have any questions about this month's box that I can answer for you, I would love to do so. Just please shoot me an email. I'd be happy to get back to you. I hope that you guys all enjoy the wines and enjoy the pairings. Um, wishing you all a happy fall. And I look forward to connecting with you all soon. Hope you enjoy the wines and have a beautiful day.